Well, there's a new talent show in town, Jimmy, and it's called The Voice. <laughs> and maybe you're not watching The Voice. Will, I am. <laughs> <laughs> John Richardson, everyone. Yeah. You know when sometimes you're watching a TV talent show, it's basically karaoke on TV, and you think, this needs chairs that spin round. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be such a big selling point, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Chair spin round, it's a big quite, deal. Yeah. Quite exciting at first. I don't think it's part of the format. <laughs> I think it was in Tom's contract, because his hips are so bad he can't turn <laughs> round anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it took so long they put the chairs in. After the show, they put wheels and handles on it and take him home. <laughs> <laughs> Is the show better if I do... <laughs> oh, I heard you, and then I didn't know what you looked like, and then I turned round. <laughs> <laughs> it should be allowed, though, once they've turned round and seen the people, to go, mm, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> if they can turn back, back again, again. <laughs> we must be joking. <laughs> Ellie, are you, are you watching it? I am, I like the judges, I like Jesse J a oh. lot. Me and Natalie were saying this, we want to be Jesse J's best friend. Her best friend? Yeah! <laughs> Jimmy. Or girlfriend. Or girlfriend, would you? I don't, I don't would like you? Ellie, we was in the makeup room, we were saying we'd give her one, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> if you three need a space to sort of hang out and just see what happens, I've got her. <laughs> <laughs> she does have the ability, though. She's, like, absolutely beautiful, but within the blink of an eye, she can go to Les Dawson. With, like, she proper gurns. Amazing. It's like... she, she's, like, beautiful, and then suddenly she'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's weird. Is it's her really hair weird. real? I think she's a big fan of wigs. Wicks. Wicks. <laughs> <laughs> Get down to... Wicks. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Tom in an old people's home just being wheeled around going, I knew Elvis, you know. <laughs> he mentioned, like, every two sentences he goes, when I was talking to Elvis. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how well he knew him, but I know they haven't spoken since 1977. <laughs> <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> Look at Tom's eyes. It's like someone in a coma who can use their arms and legs. <laughs> 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 I knew Elvis, you know. <laughs> You you enjoying it, Joe? The voice? Yeah, I like the cheers. Yeah, I like spinning around. <laughs> I, want, I want one. After the show, I might ask if I can have one. When it's if there's not a second series, I'll I'll email them. <laughs> <laughs> not the ones Tom's had. One of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Tom Jones is like he's sort of quite an icon and stuff, and he's had hits for forty years. But Danny is is in the script. <laughs> I reckon the first time the viewing public saw Danny, Wikipedia must have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he? <laughs> Literally, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. He could be in our front row now, I would not know. You wouldn't know, he wouldn't be facing you. <laughs> uh, could, could we have the fellow with a flask? The train spotter? Here's your related question. Most people think having a quirky obsession makes a person more interesting. True or false? Occasionally, I, I practice hide-and-seek <laughs> in my house, in case a game kicks off. <laughs> Are we ready? So you play hide-and-seek on your own? Yeah, pra well, I'm not playing. I'm not playing then, I'm practising. <laughs> a massive difference. Joe, you then, should yeah, come round my house. You've got to come round mine, cos my little girl, she loves hide-and-seek, and we play it all the time. I really don't think... That... You're, um... try... <laughs> You're trying to arrange a play date with yeah. your three-year-old and that. <laughs> That's just Look at him! Brain. He looks like a photo fit. <laughs> yeah, he's right. <laughs> I'm, not... I'm not being funny. I wouldn't let me in your house. <laughs> and, any quirky hobbies, obsessions over here? I've got all of them. Just pick them up, as people say, and I think, yeah, I'll have that, I'll do that. Because <laughs> you've got most OCDs, haven't you? Well, no, they're not OCDs, they're just correct ways of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> they just facts. <laughs> I'm having particular bother at the moment, cos I've moved, and on my walk to the station, there's three patches of tarmac that are different to the rest. <laughs> and the first one is an odd number of steps, and the next two are even, and it breaks my heart. <laughs> Every time I have to do a little half step so that I get an even number on the foot. You can't find a counsel about that kind of shit. <laughs> and that's like the start of the day as well. And if you've got seven bumpy tarmacs on the left foot and six on the right, you're not having a good day, are you? Then? <laughs> if, if I was sensible, I'd say, well, do you know what? It evens out when I get on. But then sometimes I can't remember if I've got uneven on oh, the left. For 
say. <laughs> Everyone's got little ones they do, and they definitely make you more interested. OK, uh, most people think having a quirky obsession makes a person more interesting. What do you think, true or false? True. What do you think? What do you think? Um, probably true. True. Probably true, Joe. True, Joe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> OK, you're going true. What are you going to go for, Joe? Absolutely. I mean, having a quirk... Can't, the definition of a quirk is something interesting, so it has to make you more interesting to have a quirk. Oh, all right, just answer. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but how many letters quirky got and how many is interesting got? Oh, Christ, jumble them up. <laughs> one's got a G, but the other one's got a Q, and that's at the beginning and that's at the end. Ah, but they're like opposites of each other, so you can't have them together joined together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, how can you join those together? <laughs> <laughs> can I just say, Sean, I think you're coming across as a little bit weird now. <laughs> To rein it in. We think it's true, Jimmy. I can tell you the answer is true. Yeah. Yeah, 85% of British people think a quirky obsession makes a person more interesting. My aunt spends 14 hours a day cleaning. She's a cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. And here's your question. Last thing Brits do before going to sleep. I always move into the slow lane. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ritual of sort of defending the house before I go to sleep. I go down, you know, I check all the locks. Sometimes I open the door, I just stand on my the sort of threshold of the house, <laughs> going, try and get into my house then! <laughs> I'm ready for you! <laughs> and that usually puts me in the mood for bed. <laughs> the great thing about having kids is that you can sleep anywhere, cos you're so sleep-deprived that you just can fall asleep, like... Anywhere. How much sleep? I mean, when they were born, presumably because you're really sleep deprived when they're little. I don't think you ever get it back, really. I don't think it ever comes back. Maybe when they're 20 and they go to college. <laughs> so, sorry, you're saying you can have a 19 year old in the house and go, <laughs> oh, I'm not getting any sleep. <laughs> oh, this 19 year old's keeping me up. He's up no. at four for a feed. <laughs> I think if I had a 19 year old in the house, I wouldn't, wouldn't get much sleep. <laughs> Yeah, have I been ever clapping John the pervert? <laughs> Big pervert! <laughs> I think if I had a nice thing, you'd have the house. I don't want to answer to it, I'd you I'm bloody hell, get hold of it and give it a nice thing to you. <laughs> That's how you talk, John. That's how you sound to southerners. You think you sound very eloquent, soft spoken. The very poetry of the lakes in your voice. But I say you sound like that. <laughs> I'm going to get hold of you. Just 19. <laughs> I don't Time know. for Uncle John to show you. I don't know what the few tricks. I've got a few tricks to show you. What the form if someone gets possessed by the ghost of Bernard Man? <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone we could call? <laughs> Do we need a priest? <laughs> oh no, it's happening again! <laughs> 19, are you 19? Are you 19? <laughs> Go with him. <laughs> You start doing the voice and you think you can stop your car. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> oh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it when it comes back at you. Oh, when it comes back, I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> are you 19? <laughs> yes, you are. It's just like being back home at Christmas. <laughs> Hannibal's just come over from America. Yeah. yeah. What, what sort of things do you think we've been talking about? We've been talking about uh, the Olympics, uh, football or soccer, yeah. and uh, you have, you have all types of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all types yeah. of stuff is happening. It's a busy place. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's exciting, isn't it's it? A, it's an exciting place. Not really for me, but I could... <laughs> I could like, if you're excited, I'm happy yeah. for you. Well, I'm just wondering. <laughs> but it might be the, the travel chaos at Heathrow. I don't see why people are complaining so much. You know, they're queuing for three hours to get into Britain. People queue for four hours to do a ride at a theme park. <laughs> this is a whole country you're getting into. <laughs> I mean, imagine what a ride that is. Within 20 minutes of Heathrow, you're in Hammersmith. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Did you have any trouble getting through Heathrow? Yeah, it took about an hour, and that was the fast track lane, cos I, I, I travel well. And, uh, sure. and it took a while, and I wasn't happy about it, but I listened to some podcasts and some music, and I judged people. And you get to judge people, and the line keeps going around, so you get to judge people six times. <laughs> you find different stuff to judge about them. Like, I didn't even know I hated that about you. <laughs> you got so many layers. <laughs>
I wonder whether this chaos has been caused by those new... They've got those new X-ray machines now. They're like body scanners, aren't they? They're basically... They can sort of see what you look like naked. And I wonder if that's holding things up. Should we send another one through, Bob? Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. You can tell you're an actor. You can really tell that. Uh, <laughs> Because I'd have just done a very... I mean, it wouldn't have been convincing at all, but... <laughs> I felt like I was in your bedroom then. then, then you know. <laughs> I was in a queue at Heathrow, and I think part of the problem... Part of the problem is that the, the passport, the, the immigration officials, this guy had glasses on, and he needed two pairs of glasses. So he'd get your passport, and he'd go, like that. I'll put the reading glasses on, like that. Oh. Look at that. And then to look at you, he'd go, hang on a sec, and he'd take them off, <laughs> and he'd go... A quick like, check again like that. And, then, <laughs> and there you go, purpose of visit. I don't want to check like that. <laughs> and he was there for about five minutes. Just a pair of bifocals. <laughs> I'd have sailed through. Well, that's not one of the most talked about things this week, but there's been travel chaos at Heathrow. Because of the queues, terrorists are being urged to delay the timers on their bombs by an extra three hours. <laughs> Johnstein, what else do you think the nation will be talking about this week? Well, I guess the reason that uh, the gentleman to my right is here... I mean, you should still be on The Voice. I think we all know this. Oh, thank you. It must have been terrifying. It was terrifying. Absolutely bloody terrifying. It's Tom Jones, isn't he? I know. <laughs> He's scary. I feel I can't really remember anything. It's all a bit scary. And then I got kicked out, really. <laughs> <laughs> the cycle of it. It was an old man, it was a bit scary, and then yeah. you got kicked out. <laughs> You cried, though, at the end, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That makes for great television oh, when well, someone cries. Oh, I know. The, the drama there. We're hoping to recreate it this evening. Oh, yeah? See how we do. <laughs> I felt sorry for you when you got voted off, because, for me, it wasn't your fault, because music officially died at the launch of that show when the four judges performed Beautiful Day by U2. <laughs> oh. I think what you've got to remember, Sam, fame is a bit like a snowman. <laughs> and by, by coming on this show, it means your carrots dropped off. <laughs> And it started to rain. <laughs> One of your arms has just slipped down. <laughs> You've still got the scarf and the little bits of coal in your eyes. So... Oh, Sam, you are not the voice. That's OK. You are the moves. You are the quiff. You are the fashion. You can come on the ass. That's a show I'm developing. <laughs> show I'm developing, The Ass. The Ass. Um, and the judges are Kim Kardashian and J-Lo and Nicki Minaj and uh, Beyonce. And they just, they, they look at an ass. And then based on that ass, <laughs> they decide whether they want to hear your talent. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have one, you're on Kim Kardashian's team. <laughs> you can come on the ass. Don't worry. I'll write you in. It's perfect. <laughs> Might be time for another one of your mimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're better off out of it, because I think since they've got rid of the turning chairs, the show's kind of... it's crap, really. <laughs> it's pointless without the spinning chairs, isn't it? It was good with the spinning chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Go up and down, whether they like you or not. Like, if Tom likes you, he goes, <laughs> well, I think you're bloody great, you are, like that. And he goes... <laughs> yeah, but I think if, if yeah, Tom's chair goes up, he's going to think he's going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Should we have a look and see whether the voice is one of the most talked about things this week? Yes, indeed. <laughs> the voice aims to take total nobodies and make them household names, like Danny from the script. <laughs> if, if you're honest, did you know who Danny was? Yes, I did. What's your favourite script song? There's so many to choose from. What's your favourite script oh, song? it's so hard, isn't it, to choose your favourite script song? I mean... <laughs> oh, there's that one. Jock, jock, show us your cock and I'll give you the <laughs> food. <laughs> oh, there's... I'll be up your flu in a minute or two and the news is such a pain. There's a hole in the front. Really? <laughs> that one. Are they even Scottish? Oh. <laughs> Oh, God, there's so mad, bloody many of them. Just anthems, really. You just chart your whole life growing up to a script. Which song. other ones? I mean, those are two good ones. Which other? Oh, there's. Other? Uh, oh, um, oh, there's <laughs> <laughs> I'll be up your pipe on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a sentence. <laughs> all those bloody oh. classics. Script. <laughs> Not even Scottish. Doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> oh, Roy Hodgson has become the England manager. Oh. Yeah. Huge news. I think he's a terrible choice. I mean, you look at him. Since he's been manager, we haven't won a single game. <laughs> <laughs> I 
What, what do you think of Roy Hodgson, Stephen? Uh, I think we've got to give him a chance. I mean, it's typical in this country, isn't it? The, the, you know, he's, uh, he speaks five languages fluently. He's won eight major trophies. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, representing this country. And the son, because he can't say his R's properly, the headline is, Bwing on the Euros. <laughs> we'll see you in Ukraine against France. <laughs> I hope the dick that wrote that gets wed war hemorrhoids. <laughs> The reason I don't like him yeah. is, if you notice, he hasn't got any shoulders. <laughs> he looks like an owl. <laughs> he his shoulders is there, he just goes down like that. <laughs> and he's not going to sit in the technical air area at the side of the pitch. He's going to be in a nest on the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the game like that. And every now and again, swoop down and get a mouse. Your problem with him is he's an owl. He does. <laughs> Of him. There he is, look. <laughs> he goes like this. When he talks, he goes like this. <laughs> and occasionally he just goes. <laughs> We've got an owl as a manager. <laughs> John, what, what do you make of this guy? I'd rather him than Harry Redknapp, to be honest. What? I really like the image that said, oh, Harry was just sat waiting by his phone. I, I, that made me laugh. I tell you, he wasn't. I bet his phone was ringing, because if I was Harry Redknapp's mate, I would have just been doing withheld number calls all day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Harry, it's the FA here. Sweet FA, see you later, Tossa. The most interesting one is John Travolta. John Travolta. The, you, you know, he gets a bit naked, asks for some favours. This is the story that two people are suing him, claiming that he made inappropriate advances whilst having a, a massage. Uh, apparently, so they say, he asked for a happy finish. And then when the guy refused, he accused him of being selfish. <laughs> A little hissy fit to have. Come on, wank me off. No. Selfish sod. <laughs> he said he's got a bill from a Chinese restaurant that night in, I think it was in New York. And they've even got what he had, which is cream of some young man. Can <laughs> 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 we just get the 70s on the phone and see if they need that back? <laughs> There's no way he's gay. He was probably out with Simon Cow picking up birds. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe John Travolta's gay. I can't believe it. It's impossible to believe. He spent a lot of time in leather. He's great at dancing, perfect teeth. He's an airline pilot. Ended up with cabin crew. He's not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I should say that John Travolta has denied these allegations. David, you must have you must have met him. You, you're a Hollywood star. Come on, you must hang out together. What is this show about? <laughs> I thought it was an animal show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's eight out of ten cats. Yeah, they, yeah, they bring them on in, in the interval. <laughs> <laughs> If you've worked on Britain's Got Talent, I guess you've got used to not taking the title of a show too literally. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's not one of the most talked about things this week, but John Travolta has been accused of inappropriate behaviour whilst having a massage. It's been alleged that Travolta propositioned the man for sex. Well, that's not quite how he put it. He actually said, will you touch my rama lama lama ka diggity ding da dong <laughs> before suggesting they move to the bedroom for some shoo-bop, shawaddy waddy ippity boom de boom <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Sean, what do you think the nation should be talking about this week? Well, there's the, uh, the, the Britain's Got Talent, which you used to do, didn't you? Did you, yeah. do, you did it over here, didn't you? I did it over here. Britain's Got Talent's mainly made here, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant, bloody Mr yeah. Logic. Yeah. What's the American one called? <laughs> What's the American one called? Ah, uh, America's Got Talent. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. But well, you were great on the show. Yeah, oh, thanks. I had a hard time understanding everyone, but I, uh, <laughs> I got to tour the country and, uh, Well, you, you, know. you, and you, you ended up going out with a lovely Welsh girl as well, you? Yeah, you met... my girlfriend is from Glyn Eath, and the weather is, uh, weather's tough over there. Uh, the weather's tough everywhere. You have two winters over here. I mean, I mean you have two summers. <laughs> it's like you have winter and July. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, that's why the buttons on our shirt go all the way up to the top. <laughs> If they yeah. made Baywatch in Britain, you'd seen a lot more nipples coming through those. <laughs> <things. laughs> I did. I haven't watched Britain's Got Talent this year until last night. I realized that the show is exactly the same as it was last year. <laughs> they just go to like the hospital, 
And it's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and they give you the people medication, and they, they send them to mm. Britain's Got Talent. And that's how you got the job. <laughs> it should be called Britain's Got a Dog That Can Stand on Two Legs. Really. <laughs> It's just a dog. So we've not seen you dance, so I imagine it's something quite similar. If I dance, countries will go to war. <laughs> Rachel, are you asking John to dance? <laughs> Definitely. Go on then. <laughs> Come in. That wasn't dancing, John. That was like turbulence on a flight. <laughs> and you're going back to your seats, is that? <laughs> Do you watch the show, Rob? Uh, yeah, well, I, was, I watched The Voice, but then it went a bit downhill after the blind auditions. But Holly Willoughby, they've made her wear low-cut tops, haven't they, to get, like, the vote viewing figures up on The Voice. But my dad told me when I was younger that if you go to the top of the television screen and look down, <laughs> right, you can see down girls' tops. It's not true. Um... <laughs> Justin, have you, have you been watching Britain's Got Talent? I watched the one when you was on it, Hoff, cos... Can I call you Hoff or the Hoff? Call me the... The, the. <laughs> 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 I like it every year where, where Simon Cowell or somebody with authority like you says, but will the Queen like it? Yeah. And I've watched it for a number of years now and I realise <laughs> the Queen loves a bit of hip-hop street dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if the judges were honest on that show, there wouldn't be a final, would there? <laughs> they just go, well, let's just give up, you know. <laughs> Butlins is brilliant at the moment because all the s*** acts are on telly. <laughs> you go to Bogner, you can see Ian McKellen doing Hamlet. <laughs> Should we have a look and see whether Britain's Got Talent is one of the most talked about things this week? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> yes, it's the final of Britain's Got Talent this Saturday. Right, fingers on buzzers, two more things to get. The coalition and, like, local elections and all that lot. <laughs> Anything that gets relaunched is doomed. So they've relaunched the coalition this week and the next thing is they'll rename it. It'll be like, it's not the coalition anymore, now we are Democritus. <laughs> 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 yeah, they've relaunched the coalition. You know, you know, keep relaunching something. I mean, you can relaunch. You can relaunch puke as street pizza. Couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and you see, Cameron was in that tractor factory in Basildon, and the best thing about it was he was doing this speech, and there's all the, they've stopped the production line, and there's all these fellows who work on the, in the factory standing around watching them. You can see in their eyes they're thinking, this doesn't count as a tea break, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know who to vote for, cos I'm like... I've got working-class background, but my girlfriend's very middle-class. She used to be upper-class, but we're together now. <laughs> <laughs> You're dragging her down, yeah. boy. Uh, her, her sister's got a boyfriend called Rupert. <laughs> Rupert! Oh, I'm not having a go, it's a decent name, but I never thought I'd meet one. <laughs> <laughs> the best way they could have re-established support in the nation this week is, like, slip a load of song lyrics into the Queen's speech. Cos she doesn't write it, she just reads it. She'd have to go, I know, for my people, money's too tight to mention. <laughs> but... And it's a big but. I like big butts. And I can't... <laughs> people don't, do you know what? They're all right, these guys. They're all right. They Did you used to do that in exams? Absolutely, yeah. We used to wanna... do that in all our exams at, at college. You like try and work lyrics and quotes from films into the, into the thing. It's quite hard to do with maths exams, though. Mm. All right, obvious. Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> have you met David Cameron? I did. I met... I went to the Parliament and I had a... you know, I just wanted to see it and uh, met uh, David Cameron. But, um, who's... who's Nick Clegg? <laughs> <laughs> that is what David Cameron asked you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, David Cameron and Nick Clegg relaunched the coalition. 7% of people don't wear underwear. Sadly, though, it's not the 7% of people you hoped. <laughs> <laughs> One in four British people have never been to Wales or Scotland, and those people are known as employers. Eight percent of men want to marry a teacher. I used to go out with a teacher. If I wanted to have sex, she always insisted I put my hand up first. <laughs> John Steen, what do you think people have been talking about this week? Probably the most exciting end to a Premier League season ever. <laughs> it was one of those moments, though, I just felt so for everyone who doesn't like sport, cos if you like sport, it was just... I mean, I was in Morrison's car park... <laughs> ..cos I was on tour, so I went and got myself a little packed lunch. And I got in the back and I pushed the seats forward and I put five live on and I just went batshit. Because <laughs> I didn't think... I knew I wanted to win, because it's basically twats versus <laughs> And then 
after a while of working out whether I prefer twat balls, <laughs> which, I mean, every man goes through at some point. <laughs> yeah. I assume we all, all watched it. They said it was the most thrilling finale ever. I thought the most thrilling finale ever is when you're trying to jack one out and someone's trying to put the key in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Soccer Saturday is the best entertainment. There's a guy called Chris Kamara who gets so excited, he starts as an analogy and then he just gets confused. There's a clip of him going, and the lads are fighting like beavers. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about this game, the Man City game, as being the most... It couldn't possibly be more dramatic. And I was thinking, well, it could be a bit more dramatic if on the final whistle, once they'd won, a mysterious fog descended on the pitch. <laughs> Ooh. And then out of the fog came Mancini, and it turns out he was a pirate ghost. Like <laughs> he was clutching the calcified heart of his virgin bride who was burnt by customs men 300 years ago. <laughs> and Gary Neville goes, Oh my God, this is unbelievable <laughs> scenes here. Mancini's a pirate ghost, come to wreak revenge. <laughs> uh, did you watch it, Vernon? I had to watch it because I'm a Bolton Wanderers fan and we were in a relegation scrap with QPR, who Manchester City were playing. Tough, yeah, we got relegated. <laughs> you're, you're back where you belong. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you come to the Reebok one day, Jimmy? Me and you. I should go to the Reebok one day. What, uh, what, what Dubai it's trainers? It, or? It's in Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a stadium. There was a man who walked out after 88 minutes and missed the best part of his life ever. <laughs> and it makes, me, it makes me feel good that I think there might have been points in my life where I've left early and I just didn't find out, like my last girlfriend, when she said, I don't think we should see each other anymore. If I'd have stayed, she'd have probably gone, unless we're husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, do you, do you follow...? Um, no, it's boring. I get that you guys love football and I love you for that, but I would be interested if they announced the players in a way that I could understand. Like, instead of numbers on their backs, they could be like, and now Colleen Rooney's husband, and now Alex Gerard's husband, and the guy who cheated on Cheryl Cole, <laughs> followed by that dickhead who's Harvey's father, you know? <laughs> and then... <laughs> what like, voice oh. are you doing? Is it a haunted house voice? <laughs> the Greeks are in... I mean, it's been going on for... Months we left his I, mean, I think the real victims in all this is people doing topical panel shows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Every week we look at it and go, what are the big stories? You go, oh, it's the bloody Greeks again, can't they? <laughs> so, I mean, it's such a nice country, got lovely weather, all that lovely lamb, marinated lamb, they've got, they got hummus, they've got taramasalata, they... yeah. Stavros Flatley, they've got it all. <laughs> Greece is just like Kerry Katona. For me, yeah. Come on, do expl explain it to us. It's exactly the same. They both, like, change management to get out of a bad situation. They both get gas from Turkey. They... <laughs> they, <laughs> they both have no jobs or market confidence. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston's Greek, and she's lovely. And she could just adopt the whole nation of Greece to save it, and that would really stick it to Brangelina as well. Yeah. She'd be like, who's Mother Earth now, home wrecker? <laughs> Note to self, say, homewrecker more. <laughs> Most people would rather communicate with their friends online than face-to-face. -face. True or false? What do you think, John? I don't like uh, the whole online... Fr I mean, if you're talking to someone online, they're not a friend, are they? That is a simple fact. <laughs> if they're not in the room, they're not a friend. People say, oh, I've got loads of friends online. No, you haven't. You're a twat. You're on your own. <laughs> So is that the voice in your head speaking to you now, or...? <laughs> I don't know which voice is which, but I'm mentally ill, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you think, like, maybe if, if you met someone that you thought was sexy online, that they could just be this weird old man? I, I went so far as to go to America to meet one, one that I'd met in Beauty's Castle. Yeah. Ooh, how did, how did that go? She was all right. <laughs> for a friend, and I swear to God, I've never... And, and being of, you know, a rotund shape myself, I feel able to say this, you know when you look, you look through the thing in your door, on your hotel, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know when you do that and it distorts someone's body shape and so yeah. they, they kind of fill the glass? And I opened the door and she was the same shape! <laughs>
Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, that I'm sure did wonders for her self-esteem. <laughs> John, how many friends would you say you have? Ah, uh, like a million. <laughs> I mean, a stranger's just a friend you haven't met yet. <laughs> what I don't like about chatting to people online is there are people whose accents I can tolerate and there are people who blah, 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 and then you talk to them online and you realise, oh, you can't write, you can't... <laughs> you can't spell, you can't punctuate. And then a male friend will send me a text with an X on it. See, you've never kissed me in real life. <laughs> Why are you suddenly getting all flirty on a text? Because <laughs> when I bring it next time we're at the pub, you're going to be, whoa, whoa, what's this? <laughs> you <laughs> started it. You <laughs> <put> it. <laughs> uh, Paul, have you ever met anyone online? I just don't understand the whole... Because if Facebook, you can talk to people now face-to-face. -face. Twitter, you're going to introduce it. But I don't understand the whole following thing. If I want to follow someone, I'll do it in a raincoat. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you one of any of these things, Catherine? I am, yes. I'm on Facebook and the Twitter. And the last time I appeared on this show, um, I was very happy to get lots of lady followers and very confused to get lots of pictures of cocks. <laughs> I would like to apologise for that. I think I misread the signs. <laughs> <laughs> Worst thing about going to the gym. Changing rooms, but like I, um, if I'm getting changed, I try to do it without exposing my bits to other men. Yeah, because they're all hiding all around the changing rooms, waiting for you to come in. <laughs> John's coming. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> hides. <laughs> they're getting in the laundry bin in the towels like that. <laughs> like Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> they lifted that. And go. Is John there? Yeah. <laughs> that they were hiding, but they're not hiding. They're just stood there with everything out, flossing their ani in front of me. <laughs> so I assume other men don't want to see my testicles. But if you're the man in the change rooms doing the towel thing where you have to flick your knickers up, or your, or your boxer shorts <laughs> up... Your knickers? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't want this to descend into some sort of playground teasing, but it would appear that John <laughs> wears knickers. <laughs> I actually believe, and this is the, one, the exercise I practice, the world is my gym, because <laughs> I practice diametric tension. So, for example, if I pick up a cup of tea, I go like this, I go... <laughs> I think the worst thing about going to the gym is the music. Because you never have music you like, it's always like... Doo, 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 doo. It's very difficult to exercise to, like, Swan Lake. <laughs> it does seem to be a universal thing in every gym in the country they've gone, tell you what people want. Unt, 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 well, that's, unt. that's a bad example, because that is a good one. But... Yeah. <laughs> there are some annoying ones as the well. The thing is, if you get rid of the umt, 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 that just amplifies the idiot who's giving it... <laughs> <laughs> of course well, you can smile. opening my locker. <laughs> <laughs> The Olympic torch has landed on these shores and we are watching it go uh, round go round the country. Interminably. It's, it started in Cornwall. Mm. That's because they flew Ryanair and that's actually... <laughs> <laughs> that's their London airport. <laughs> London, Cornwall, we're landing in. And then it's going round the country with various people carrying it aloft. Yeah, little Will I Am. Yeah. Carried it. <laughs> He's a miniature, half a Corbett. Is he? Yeah, half, half a Corbett. Half a Corbett. Is that how we measure celebrities? Yes. Now? <laughs> and uh, it's very heavy for him, but he's been carrying it. Mm. Can we just call him William? <laughs> <laughs> His name is William. Just because he can't punctuate doesn't mean <laughs> I don't call myself J on. <laughs> Who's Will I am? <laughs> he, is he in the Olympics? <laughs> uh, no. He's brilliant and he's on the voice, he sits on the chair, his feet don't touch the floor. <laughs> Why is he holding the torch? Uh, the, the reason he's doing it, the reason we are, I am carrying it, is because he's Corgi registered. <laughs> As a gas fitter. He's <laughs> <laughs> drug was. I didn't know this, but he's a fully qualified gas engineer. He worked for, uh, <laughs> he worked for EDF for a while. <laughs> it's a very special fire, though, isn't it? It's the, it's it's the Olympic, it's the yeah. Olympic fire. And it's, uh, apparently it's very cathartic for people who come out to see it. Because anyone who sees the, uh, the, the flame go past instantly forgets they didn't get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> there have 
hear in some fantastic protests, did you read about that guy in Taunton who threatened to set fire to his camper van? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what he was protesting against. I've got a camper van. Every yeah. time you make a cup of tea, technically, you're threatening to set fire to it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, are you excited about this? Are you excited about the flame? No. <laughs> what, what about the Olympics more generally? Are you... it's, it's nice. So, like, on buses and stuff, they're, like, saying, um, oh, let's pretend, like, the rest of the world is, like, our mum. And if you had a flat, you'd tidy up your flat and make it look nice for when your mum came over. And London's your flat, so let's all tidy it up, cos people might come round and see what a shithole it is. <laughs> and it's just like, we live here, and they shouldn't be making us do all of the work. You know, like, oh, if you, what, pick up your own litter? You do it. <laughs> just because there's someone coming over from Germany, right, or another country, right, doesn't mean that we should be on our special best behaviour. You should be on your special best behaviour all the time. Don't patronise us. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> My mum doesn't visit, it's fine. <laughs> I like the fact that Sean's got Nick on his team and, and John's got David. It looks like we're filling a quota of homeless men. <laughs> oh, let's just check the Channel 4 lady ratings when this show goes out. <laughs> Having me and Helm on the same show... It's like, don't cross the streams! Ah! <laughs> Sexiest thing that's ever been on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David O'Doherty does not own a mirror. <laughs> he has also don't... never spoken to a lady. <laughs> I'm incredible at ladies. I'd just like to make that clear. You're incredible at ladies. <laughs> if you say so, yes, I am. <laughs> Most people found their wedding day more stressful than enjoyable. True or false? Claudia, what do you think? Is it I, well, more stressful than getting enjoyable? Getting married is obviously hideous. Of course it's stressful. I don't know. I had a glass of wine and had to have a nap at my own wedding. I can't drink wine, I fall fast asleep. Really? Yeah, I had to sleep in my dad's lap. Look weird. <laughs> it's stressful just going to a wedding. Everyone I've been invited to, because I'm single, you get sat on the table with all the friggin' single people. <laughs> and I'll put the couples together and we'll have a table full of twats and we'll all watch them. <laughs> They're not single people, John. They're children. <laughs> Why do people think that a wedding has to be something that financially cripples them for the rest of their lives? Because it's such a big thing, though. If you, as a pressure of a man, if I looked at a woman and said, I really <coughs> want to marry you, but let's, let's really keep them costs down. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say for the record, John, that I do think at some stage you will say that to a girl? <laughs> are, you, are you married, Kate? I am married, yes. You are married. I give you a quick Google. <laughs> Uh, would you? Before. Oh, you did? I did. I googled you before. Mm. And I read that your hob you enjoy being nude mm. and keeping bees. Yeah. <laughs> Have you not heard of nude beekeeping? It strikes me as a health and Olympic safety nightmare. Sport. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first bit of that? The keeping bees, I, I, I understand. Yeah. So, what was the first yeah. bit? Being nude. Is that your...? Well, it's not something... Because you're, you're a naturalist, not a naturist. Or yes, no, that's true. But sometimes there's just times when life feels good and it's nice just to dance around with no clothes on. But there'd be no point in wearing the hat if that was the only thing you were wearing. <laughs> Don't finish. <laughs> I want to see the circuitry. <laughs> Bit at the back where you switch him on. <laughs> you actually turn me on around the front. <laughs> Top animal people wish could speak. Well, I think they would say their own pet. I think most people would prefer to have a conversation with their cat than they would with their husband. Are there problems at home? <laughs> <laughs> I would like an otter to speak. <laughs> I don't want it to be an obvious ah. animal. I don't want it to be like a goldfish, even though I'm a goldfish whisperer. Sorry, you're a goldfish whisperer? I have had a goldfish for literally 11 years. OK, I'm going to say now, and I don't want you to be unhappy with me, <laughs> but I'm going to say your husband <laughs> has been replacing that fish on a regular basis. <laughs> Her 
tail has grown <laughs> quite a lot. Sometimes she looks quite different. Um, <laughs> Are you just finding out now that this dog? Don't, is... don't, don't. And also, yeah, I don't want to believe it. It's like when the dog actually, I believe it, is living on a farm. Your dog went to live on a farm? Yeah. I don't want to talk Wait about it. Wait until you hear about your grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick, if, you, if any animal could talk, what, what animal would you most like to...? There's a really skinny cat outside our house that comes over every day, and I just want to know what it wants. <laughs> <laughs> if that uh, dog that won that talent contest a few weeks ago, if that could talk, that would be just... Can, can I... Please go back to licking my balls for six hours a day. <laughs> I think the third point about if animals could talk is it'd be incredibly boring because animals are stupid. Just be basically going, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. That was a bit of food. I'm horny, I'm horny, I'm horny. I'm going to kill that, I'm going to kill that. I'm hungry again, I'm hungry again. <laughs> but birds are just... I mean, the most interesting thing a bird might say is your nest is... The Robin Redbreast. Yeah, so Actually, right. the Robin, Robin Redbreast is, is a vicious. total. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought I wanted dogs to talk, and then I suddenly realised it would be really degrading for them. Because what are they going to say? They just have to keep coming in and going, um, I have <laughs> shat all over the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I went in the bin last night, something's disagreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> it is carnage out there. <laughs> I'm trying to move away from it. It's all up the wall. <laughs> oh, God, I can't clean. These are paws. I can't. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you have got a job on your hands. Eurovision. Did you watch Eurovision? Part of it, yes. Yes, part but of it. But it. it was a... Yeah. I knew how it was going to end. How it always ends. In humiliation. <laughs> I didn't feel it was humiliating. We came second from bottom. Yeah. Not bottom, but second from bottom. Yeah. Could have been worse. I only watch the votes. I don't watch... I don't really like <clears throat> pop music. I don't really like celebration. So I just watch <laughs> the bit in the middle where it's just a stream of sort of semi-racist European accents. <laughs> it's my favourite bit when you go, Hey, thanks, Azerbaijan. We can see you've been having a great time. <laughs> And they all sound like really camp Bond villains. <laughs> I know you've been having a great party, but there's time for the party to end now, because... <laughs> <laughs> Here are the decisions of the Turkish people. Shh. Five points for Jedward. <laughs> <laughs> Jedward! Jedward did better than we Jedward. did again. What did you happened? see Jedward? I did. I did. I didn't know that was a thing till this week. I'm very sorry for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> At least they were trying. I mean, the UK sent out Engelbert Humperdinck. I mean, they had to, they had to dig up his corpse. <laughs> they had to reanimate him. And then they sent him up there to die again. It was absolutely <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I've got a clip of uh, Engelbert Humperdinck uh, uh, rocking it, frankly, in Azerbaijan. Have a look at this. Go out this year forever And the hood will run deep Only love can set you free And if you love someone Follow your heart Cause love comes once If you're lucky enough No, no, no <laughs> What is he even saying? Love comes once if you're lucky. You knew. <laughs> Love comes once if you're lucky. You knew. <laughs> Who talks like that? Did you see the plumbing problems at that? <laughs> at the back? The way that plumbing just gave way. Well, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I thought they were doing welding above him. <laughs> there was no spot welding going on. I thought, that's going to put him off. He could have got up in flames, just like that. <laughs> Apparently, if he'd come last, uh, on the way back from Azerbaijan, the BBC said they'd drop him off in Switzerland at uh, Dignitas Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> His life. Do you know that expression, singing for your life? <laughs> I like it, though. I do like, I like it. You, you like Eurovision generally? Well, I, like, I think it's much better than The X Factor or, or The Voice because you've got one night, 26 shit acts, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and they piss off for another year. <laughs> a 
it's not three months of drawn out and then hearing how their dog's got cancer or anything like that. <laughs> Just all done with. Krishnan, did you, did you watch the Eurovision? You know, I didn't watch it because I'd interviewed the Azerbaijani ambassador just before it began about human know? rights. Oh, OK. So I didn't watch it out of protest. What has he done then? Uh, well, uh, he denied everything. It was quite funny. I mean, you know, because they, they had, they've got hunger strikers on at the moment, they've got political prisoners, and I just asked them about it. Or oh, he said, no, we don't. We don't have any political prisoners, <laughs> and we don't have any hunger strikers, and it's all lies. Are you sure you had the right guy? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds to me like you might have just... I mean, it is quite far. I've seen Channel 4 News and sometimes it's a bit yeah, like that. <laughs> Do you want to see... I mean, we came second from bottom. Do you want to see what came 11 places above us? Yeah. Have a look. This is Lithuania. Love is blind. It's true. I'm on my knees for you. Cos I give it all. To have you back again Love is blind <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what I think's happened there is his fee was actually fine with the blindfold on. <laughs> When he took the blindfold off, <laughs> he went nuts. <laughs> My favourite act was the uh, was the Albanian. Do you want to have a look? Sick, yeah. It's pretty impressive. Be brave to walk into a salon and say, I want to do something with my hair. Is there any way you can make it look like I've crapped on my own chest? <laughs> snake wrapped you, round a neck. Could, could you give me an outfit which makes me look like I'm trying to get out of a chimney? <laughs> <laughs> that reminds you of childhood, doesn't it? Can you have another look at us, doesn't it? It just looked like she was trying to squeeze out of a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if your revision is up there. <laughs> yes, it was your revision on Saturday. During Jedward's performance, a spectacular stunt using a water feature went tragically wrong, drowning neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? The, the, the U-turn on the pasty tax. It's very complicated because they can now, you can now can sell a hot pasty from the oven but you can't sell a hot pasty that's been put on a warm tray. You can sell it. You just don't get charged you can't, VAT. So you, can't see, you, you have to charge VAT. I d I'm glad it just means no politician has to say the word pasty anymore, because we've just had enough of people... I don't mind that they don't eat them, but I just don't want to see them on telly when David Cameron was pretending he eats pasties. Oh, I, I had a pasty recently, and they said, what kind? You know, oh, I think it was a large one. <laughs> kind of pasty. She's a kind of dick. If you said, oh, what's your favourite drink? You'd go, oh, beer. <laughs> oh, what kind do you like? Oh, pints. <laughs> you don't have to be liked. Just say, I don't eat pasties. I don't need to. I'm, I'm the Prime Minister. Someone brings me vegetables and meats. <laughs> but don't pretend you eat them. Yeah. You, you get the feeling with Cameron, though, that if, the, if like, the price of tampons went up, there'd be a shot of him <laughs> with his trousers down going... <laughs> Girls, go. <laughs> Once a month, oh. Campax. Nothing wrong. Have you ever been to Greg's? Yeah, of course I have. I'm a, um, an ardent cheese onion pasty fan. We were weaned on pasties in the north. Can't you tell? Mean? I mean, look at her. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, look as if you, <laughs> you don't look as if you put a lot of them away, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'm a pasty fan. You're allowed to eat a pasty and exercise as well, though. It doesn't have to. <laughs> I like seeing the fat people spinning and brushing when they're finished. It's the most exercise they ever get. <laughs> that spin and brush. <laughs> 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 they, 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 
they gaze the wind, they go, Ooh, and they spin and brush all the crumbs off them. If you look down any high street in the UK, you will see the spin and brush taking place most of the day. Fat people spinning and brushing, the odd one goes over. <laughs> Yeah, European Championships. I reckon they're talking about that. I mean, a lot of people are talking about that. It's quieter than normal, though. It's not what? as much. I reckon everyone's getting ready for the Olympics. Everyone's waiting for the racism to kick off. That's why it's quiet. <laughs> because there's been so much lead up to it that the fact that it's having. It's like if you had a party and you had a massive balloon and you just held a pin next to it like that. And you went, how's the party? Is everyone enjoying the party? <laughs> <laughs> everyone would really be thinking, when are you going to burst that fucking balloon? <laughs> I'm going to cry when that how's, happens. How's... How scared are you of a balloon burst? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you don't have an ounce of fear when someone's blowing a balloon and they yeah. get to that point where their colour's started to fade and it's too big and you yeah. want to say to them, it's big enough, stop! <laughs> John, that's when I hold my eyelids open and walk right up to the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I've got interest in football is when Peter Crouch and David Beckham are playing and <laughs> basically... That famous yeah. heartthrob, Peter Crouch. I love him. <laughs> Oh, that David. dance he does. That dance really? he does? That's not it. You're the only one. <laughs> You're thinking of dressage. <laughs> I love Spurs, that's who I support. Right. Who and they're not the playing, are they, in the Euros? They're not playing in the Euros, <laughs> no. They're... <laughs> they... <laughs> As a Spurs fan, you'll know that uh, the Spurs manager left this week. His name was... Uh, Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho. <laughs> Jose Mourinho. He's got quite a Cockney him. accent now. He's really picked up English, Jose Mourinho. Oh, is it Harry Redknapp? Harry Redknapp. That's it. I love Harry. I He's love gone. Harry. You know what I didn't like about the match against uh, France was it started at five o'clock in the afternoon, which means I have to watch it with my kids, which ruins it, because they just ask loads and loads of questions. So it starts off, it goes, who's in the white shirts? You go, that's England. Oh, we live in England, don't we? Yes. <laughs> who's in the blue shirts? That's France. Why is he wearing yellow? He's the referee. <laughs> what does he do? He tells all the rules. What are the rules? You can't pick the ball up. Why is that man picking the ball up? <laughs> He's the England goalkeeper. England? Why is he wearing green? You go, oh. <laughs> In the end, I just, uh, I just recorded it and put happy feet on and got my own back. He goes, why is that penguin talking? <laughs> <laughs> they can't... They can't nick scarves. You're not actually collecting the stickers, are you? Yes. <laughs> the, pan the Panini stickers book. Yeah, but I didn't want it to come out like this. <laughs> I, thought I'd I thought I'd at least entice a girl back to my bedroom before I brought out my spots. <laughs> How many do you need now? How many do I need? Um, 250 stickers and one girlfriend. <laughs> Does anyone have the England shiny? It's dreadful, the shiny. It's not the official badge because it's not licensed because we go with Merlin. But uh, I'm not doing the stickers because I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> we <Weird> all <alert. laughs> Are you John, doing the stickers? John as well? is doing the stickers. I've swapped with John. You're collecting the stickers. I am acquiring stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you two are collecting stick your grown <laughs> men. Me and Josh were together in Greenwich last week, weren't we? Yeah. We went on the hunt for stickers. <laughs> <laughs> the look we got. It, do they have any stats on, or is it just the pictures of the blokes? Oh, now she's interested. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. Uh, that oh, I'm... I need that. <laughs> See, I walk out. I'll swap you. Oh, this may be the most tragic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's pretty much what the news agent said when I said he's doing the stickers, and he just looked at both of us and went, no. <laughs> What's the pleasure of it? The pleasure is in the... putting the stickers exactly in the lines. <laughs> I think if it was scratch cards, it'd be worth it. But not what you're doing. You look at me like I'm filthy, like I've just admitted that I like to <laughs> on dead hedgehogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're doing is just a little bit... I mean, if it was... Why is a scratch card better than a sticker book? You, like... I like the way you've got really outraged <laughs> from it. <laughs> why, why is that really bad? Hey, a, a scratch card's a pound and a packet of stickers is 50p, so financially I'm up straight away. <laughs> <laughs> when you scratch a scratch card, you, you throw it away, you bin it. When I collect a sticker, that's in my book and I've got that forever. <laughs> John started this conversation by pretending he didn't collect the stickers. Uh, <laughs> and now it's come out, he's the biggest ambassador for them in Britain. <laughs> 
amazing statistic. Going into this tournament in the Euros, England have never won their first game, have never beaten Sweden in a competitive match, and have never beaten the hosts of the tournament. I learned that in a sticker book. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, gay marriage? Or garage, as I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the church are concerned about it, that, uh, that they'll be forced to marry gay people in churches. It's like they've thought, this is the thin end of the wedge. What next? Horses? <laughs> <laughs> 80% of people under 50, so are there supposed to be for gay marriage? So why don't... What's the problem? Yeah, just, just get over it. Over it. Well, it's the problem All they've got is they've got a very, very diminishing congregation. People say churches are half empty. They're not. They're too big. <laughs> <laughs> they, should be, they should be like little, you know, tea huts. <laughs> you know, if you go on the outside of a town, they've got those big retail sheds like Halfords. But like having one of those for a key cutter, you know, it's just... <laughs> In there with a key cutting machine, this massive big shed. <laughs> it's not. It's not the appropriate building for the for the marketplace. <laughs> well, what, do, what do you make of this, Reg? The gay marriage thing? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you are like a, a gay enthusiast. Um, <laughs> I would describe would myself probably, as a gay enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> if you are a gay enthusiast, you probably would more enjoy the company of other gay enthusiasts. So you, you make know, it sound like a hobby. <laughs> Well, they make it look like it's fun. So... <laughs> Can I just say something? Are you on the way to a wedding now? No. <laughs> it's especially for you. Well, thank you very much. Because you look much. like the man from Del Monte in that suit. Thank you. <laughs> but basically, you know... You said yes a few times, I would imagine. <laughs> basically, the church... Oi, oi, pack it in. The church... <laughs> The church has this thing, you know, we will welcome anyone through our doors and everything. And really, a lot of people hide in the church. You know, you've got a lot of these people that work in churches. You see documentaries on it. They've molested children when they have been in their church. Right. So, I don't think the church has the right to turn around and say, if you're gay, you can't get married in the church, because what goes on in a lot of churches isn't 100% anyway. <laughs> Take that. Yeah. Well, good. Of course, I know what you mean. A lot of what happens in churches ain't 100%. <laughs> that is a fact. It's inherently unchristian to discriminate in any way. The question you should ask as a Christian is, who would Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs> the, big, the big question for me is, why would anyone want to marry a bloke? But we had a bloke sleep on our sofa recently. I mean, there was a smell in the house for about two days. <laughs> but you have to remember that before your wife got to you, you smelt like that too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why anyone would want to marry anyone. I mean, get together, sure, your bill's half price. I understand. <laughs> I get it. TV licence is going up, gas is going up, electric's going up. Share it with someone, but don't bring paperwork into the eventual demise of your love. I think it's respect. If you actually marry someone, it, it shows that, you know, there's respect there. Right. Because, you know... <laughs> it, <laughs> listen, you get a nice ring out of it, and not only that, <laughs> basically, you have a fantastic day. But if you've been with someone for years and they can't even get down to Tiffany's and buy you a decent oh ring, God. get them gold. Do you not know where Tiffany's is? Yeah, Bond Street. Nip down and get one yourself then, love. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not that. I can buy my own ring. Josh, what, what do you make of gay marriage? I've only, I don't like going to weddings. I find it stressful. I'd just get rid of marriage. If you don't have weddings, the only time the whole family gets together is at funerals. And that is depressing. Very true. Not all the family, because there's one that's... Um... <laughs> Johnstein, what else have the nation been talking about this week? The Facebook man who floated Facebook on the stock exchange for, um, I think it was six gajillion bazillions. <laughs> Speaking from experience, I'm an internet entrepreneur myself, so... Tell me more, David. Did you ever hear of Google? <laughs> <laughs> Originally, it was a smaller operator. Originally, it was just me, and you, you faxed me the question. <laughs> A couple of days later, and you'd be like, God, that's quick. <laughs> then I do so much research, I developed an eye condition, and that's where we get the term uh, googly eyes from. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, he got married, didn't he? Yes. Zuckerberg got married. He got married, and, um, Did you watch this? Yeah. yeah of course. And uh, I was looking forward to seeing the ring. You know, like, before they ask you to uh, marry them, you lie. 
you know, you pretend all kinds of stuff. So you tell lies before you get married? Well, I did. What lies did you tell? <laughs> I said uh, that I like Bob Dylan. I said I like dogging. <laughs> <laughs> I said I didn't want kids. Boom! <laughs> Never play that shit music. I'm not going to the A40 and I'm pregnant! <laughs> <laughs> You know, because they live very modestly, he's the richest man in the world. She's like, no, no, baby, I don't want anything. And he asks her, and he's given her a chip. Like, he's given her... If I pulled it out of a cracker, I'd go and fight with the people. At and, like, at what point does she go, that old me? Kidding. Go to Graf, get me something that would make Liz Taylor wake up. <laughs> go get me something. <laughs> But Sean's got Nick on his team and, and John's got David. It looks like we're filling a quota of homeless men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's just check the Channel 4 lady ratings when this show goes out. <laughs> Having me and Helm on the same show, it's like, don't cross the streams. Ah! <laughs> this is the sexiest thing that's ever been on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David O'Doherty does not own a mirror. <laughs> He has also never spoken to a lady. <laughs> I'm incredible at ladies. I'd just like to make that clear. <laughs> You're incredible at ladies. <laughs> if you say so, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's never been a better time, if you want to support Greece, is to get pissed on an Uzo. <laughs> <laughs> just go, I'll support a great economy. <laughs> Uzo, it's the last thing at a party. You know you've had a good party if you get down to the Uzo. Yeah. Well, Uzo, they, you notice they never advertise it. Cos the only way you could advertise it would be a man wiping his ass with his own pants. <laughs> <laughs> Uzo. Uzo, tonight's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. but, you, know, you know, with Uzo, genuinely, if you put it in an eye drop and put it on your own eyes... <laughs> oh, no, no, it's oh like, Johnny! It's, it's like having X-ray specs for about ten seconds and then it starts to really burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, ten seconds are going... <laughs> ah! <laughs> that is a man that spent some time with alcohol. <laughs> when I first met you, you were drinking, I think it was Baileys and Cointreau in pints. Yeah, that, that was like a Gaviscon. <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about this week? It's the Euro 2012, Jimmy. Right, and they're in Poland and the Ukraine. Yes. I know there's been controversy about those places not being great to visit. They're despicable places, and everyone's known it for a long time, uh, racism-wise in football. And sometimes you write jokes, and sometimes they're written for you. And England are the fourth favourites to win the tournament. <laughs> There's really nothing else to say about that. <laughs> I don't think we're fourth favourites to get out of our group, to be honest. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? We're going to win it. We are going to win it. I do not understand this pessimism. You've got to be optimistic. You've got to really <laughs> start to believe that we can actually win it. There's a difference, though, between optimism and delusion. <laughs> Injuries have dogged the England squad. Gary Cahill has a bad jaw, Frank Lampard has damaged his hamstring, and John Terry has something seriously wrong with his personality. <laughs> John, what else do you think made the list? Mare... shit. Mare shit. Yeah. Mare shit, yeah! That's happening. For real. Here's all the Boris and Ken stuff and who's going to win. I think if anyone should win, it, it, it's probably better to be Boris because at least he could give a good speech at the Olympics rather than Ken. He always sounds like he's just about to embark upon a lecture about, like, interesting developments in drainage or something. <laughs> he hasn't got the majesty to hold it, unlike Boris, I think. Yeah, but we're looking for a mayor, not a town crier. <laughs> <laughs> they already had a fight, didn't they? They had a fight in a lift. Yes. Boris pinned Ken up against a wall and called him an effing liar. Yeah. Three times. Three t thrice. 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 <laughs> and the Brian Paddock was in there and he said, oh, I nearly arrested you. <laughs> and the Green Party lady, she couldn't say anything because she should have been using the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
A 19-year-old from Chorley has had the face of Boris tattooed on his leg. It was all a misunderstanding. He asked for an anchor. <laughs> Do you want to have a look at this tattoo? It's a genuine thing. He's had a tattoo of Boris. Have a look. That's great. What a good tattoo, though. What a good piece of artwork that is. <laughs> Always seeing the positive. That's what we like about you. It is. Yeah, nice. nice. You know what I'd you like to have Sean Locke tattooed on my back. Cos he's my favourite comedian. He's so, your favourite comedian? Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, at the moment. A picture of Sean Locke on your back? Yeah, That'd be slightly off-putting for me later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John Steve, what do you think people have been talking about this week? The most interesting one is John Travolta. John Travolta. The, you, you know, he gets a bit naked, asks for some favours. This is the story that two people are suing him, claiming that he made inappropriate advances whilst having uh, a massage. <laughs> David, you must have you must have met him. You, you're a Hollywood star. Come on, you must hang out together. What is this show about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was an animal show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight out of ten cats. Yeah, they, yeah, they bring them on in, in the interval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you've worked on Britain's Got Talent, I guess you've got used to not taking the title of a show too literally. <laughs> <laughs> It's been alleged that Travolta propositioned the man for sex. Well, that's not quite how he put it. He actually said, will you touch my rama lama lama ka ding -a -dee ding da dong <laughs> before suggesting they move to the bedroom for some shoo-bop, shoo-waddy-waddy, -waddy, ippity boom de boom <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. OK, Sean, what do you think the nation will be talking about this week? Britain's Got Talent. Did you, yeah. do it, you did it over here, didn't you? I did it over here. Britain's Got Talent's mainly made here, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> What's the American one called? Ah, uh, America's Got Talent. Yes. <laughs> I knew but, it. Yeah. But you were great on the show. Yeah, oh, thanks. I had a hard time understanding everyone, but I, uh, <laughs> I got to tour the country and, uh, Well, you, you, know. you, and you, you ended up going out with a lovely Welsh girl as well, you? Yeah, you my girlfriend is from Glyn Heath and the weather is, uh, weather's tough over there. Uh, the weather's tough everywhere. You have two winters over here. I mean, I mean you have two so It's like you have winter and July. <laughs> yeah, that's why the buttons on our shirt go all the way up to the top. <laughs> I met Fudsy this week, and I thought I was a dog fan, but to be fair, never met one with more money than me. <laughs> yeah, I was watching that, and I thought I'd be a lot more impressed if, if he was a Labrador and she was blind. <laughs> and the blue team... The dance routine was actually worked out by the dog. <laughs> She's just going, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? <laughs> and that. It was £500,000, that right? Yeah, I know. It's Amazing. It's a lot of money. How much does, she, does the lady get? All of it. Um... Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a dog. <laughs> She's going to go, one for me, one for you. <laughs> He's not looking. He's over there. Chucks a stick away and goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a new talent show in town, Jimmy, and it's called The Voice. <laughs> and maybe you're not watching The Voice. Will I am? <laughs> John Richardson, everyone. Yeah. You know when sometimes you're watching a TV talent show, it's basically karaoke on TV, and you think, this needs chairs that spin round. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be such a big selling point, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Chairs spin round, it's a big well, deal. It's quite yeah, exciting it's... at first. I don't think it's part of the format. <laughs> I think it was in Tom's contract, cos his hips are so bad he can't turn <laughs> round anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it took so long, they put the chairs in. After the show, they put wheels and handles on it and take him home. <laughs> <laughs> Is the show better if I did... I heard you, and then I didn't know what you looked like, and then I turned around. <laughs> <laughs> it should be allowed, though, once they've turned around and seen the people, to go, mm, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> if they can yeah, turn back again, back again go, well, you must be joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I mean, Tom Jones is like, he's sort of quite an icon and stuff, and he's had hits for 40 years, but Danny is, is in the script. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon the first time the viewing public saw Danny, Wikipedia must have crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he? 
literally, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. He could be in our front row now, I would not know. You wouldn't know, he wouldn't be facing you. <laughs> not the voice. That's okay. You are the moves. You are the quiff. You are the fashion. You can come on the ass. That's a show I'm developing. <laughs> 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 show I'm developing, The Ass. The Ass. Um, and the judges are Kim Kardashian and J-Lo and Nicki Minaj and uh, Beyonce. And they just, they, they look at an ass. And then based on that ass, <laughs> they decide whether they want to hear your talent. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have one, you're on Kim Kardashian's team. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on The Ass and you can come on The Ass. <laughs> no, I can't guarantee you'll get in, but you can. <laughs> The voice aims to take total nobodies and make them household names, like Danny from the script. <laughs> if, if you're honest, did you know who Danny was? Yes, I did. What's your favourite script song? I went to Euro Disney uh, when I was a young teenager and got groped by Pluto. <laughs> sort of put me off it, really. Had my photo taken with him and his big dog hand. <laughs> Gave me a squeeze on my prepubescent buns. <laughs> He probably doesn't work there anymore. He's probably moved on. He's probably a priest now or something. I've, I've never thought there might be a sinister reason why Mickey Mouse wears those white gloves before now. <laughs> no Prince Pluto! <laughs> <laughs> do you think Minnie and Mickey are like children? Or do you think they're grown-up mice? I think, think they've grown up. Well, I think they've grown up in my head. They've grown up. Are they, are they a couple or are they brother and sister? Oh, Jesus. I think mice. They've both got the same surname. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what's going on because I've got the two year old. Oh, Mickey and Minnie dating. Donald and Daisy dating. Goofy, a dog dating Clarabelle, a cow who has a pet <laughs> dog. And Pluto's also a pet who like doesn't make any decisions or choices. Something's wrong in the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That was such a good explanation. Me and my friend at uni took um, a girl on a first date to see Freddy versus Jason. And then on the way home, he bought her... Well, he didn't actually buy her. They went to KFC, but he wouldn't even treat her to the bucket. <laughs> he wouldn't it. even treat her to the bucket? The KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Is that... She had to split the bucket. He split the bucket? <laughs> <laughs> he took, he didn't see a movie and then he split the bucket. Well, that he sounds did. like... Uh, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> the rudest thing I've ever said. <laughs> Piranha 3 Double D is a sequel, isn't it? There's a Piranha film. Yes. Did you see that before you did 3 Double D? Of course he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, part of it. And on heart, have you seen Piranha 3 Double D? Well, yes, I did. I, yeah. I did, I did go to the restroom at the, the, the pivotal moment of the film and I missed that. Oh. Is it when all the... Credits come up. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it has something to do with a piranha and a guy and, and... Well, there's... You can say most anything you want on these TV shows. So if, if, if I say Willie... <laughs> well, steady on, David, steady on. You... There's kids. There's kids still watching this. You're saying the F word every, every five seconds. Are you making was... a reference to Mr. Tinkle? <laughs> Mr. Tinkle getting his anatomy <laughs> chopped off in 3D by a piranha while in the moment. Yeah. In the moment. <laughs> I can't believe you said Willie on the show. Don't you have people? You, I mean, do you not have the name Willie over here? Oh! Is there a Willie in the audience? Oh, my God! 